welcome to my teacher program. This is Maria Meza. Today we'll be continuing the same topic. Last class we were discussing about genetics. So we'll be continuing the topic, genetics. So let us see what we were discussing in the last class. We had discussed Mendelian theories, theory of dominance, theory of segregation, and theory of independent assortment. And also we have studied about the incomplete dominance and co-dominance. Now let us see some problems based on this because you can expect all these type of problems in your theory as well as for your medical entrance examination. Here <coughs> the most important thing is if you have the concept basic idea about all these theories it is very easy for you to work out on these problems. Now first see the problem number one. In a pea plant, the gene for tallness is dominant over the gene for doffness. What will be the genotype and phenotype if a plant heterozygous for tall cross with a doff plant? So this is the question. In a pea plant, the gene for tallness is dominant over the gene for doffness. Let us see this. For example, in this it is very clearly given. Here we can see that the Tallness is dominant and it is also mentioned it is heterozygous. So what you can understand in this case both the alleles are of different types not of the same type. Now let us see the, the tall heterozygous crossed with a, a plant with a dwarf, dwarf character. So dwarf we have only one possibility that is it can be only small t small t. So remember that this type of cross that is here we are crossing the capital T small t which we have obtained in the F1 generation that we are going to cross back with the one of the parent. So here we are crossing the F1 generation with the recessive parent. This type of cross is known as test cross, <coughs> test cross. So you should understand what is the difference between a test cross and a back cross. Back cross means here the F1 generation we are crossing with the any one of the parent either the homozygous dominant parent or we cross with the recessive parent. Now let us see come back to the problem here we can see that we are working out with the test cross heterozygous pea plant crossed with a dwarf plant. Now what are the alleles or the gametes of this plant? that this plant can produce two types of gametes that is one gamete is capital T other one is small t and which is crossed with the dwarf plant which is having small t small t. So here you do not need to repeat it you have to mention only once you will get capital T small t and small t small t. So this is the genotype if you want you can work out here, here also capital T small t and we are getting small t small t. Now let us see what is the genotypic ratio the genotypic ratio we are getting capital T small t we got 2 and we got small t small t again again 2. So the ratio the genotypic ratio <coughs> genotypic ratio is genotypic ratio is 2 is to 2 that means it is 1 is to 1. Is it clear to you? Now what is the phenotypic ratio? Phenotypic ratio here again we are having a tall plant and a dwarf plant. So again we got the phenotypic ratio, phenotypic ratio also 1 is to 1 or we can say that in a test cross we are getting 50 percent of the parental type, we have got the 50 percent of the heterozygous parental type and 50 percent we are getting the recessive trait. So that means 50 percent and 50 percent or we can say that 1 is to 1 ratio. Is this clear? That is we have taken the heterozygous tall plant and crossed with a dwarf plant. This type of cross is known as the test cross. Here we got the ratio 1 is to 1 ratio. Hope this is clear to you. Now let us see the <coughs> test cross in case of dihybrid crosses, test cross in case of dihybrid crosses that is we have 
seen that when we consider two trades at a time. Here, what were the trade what which we have taken the two trades? That is, we have taken round yellow, round yellow, and we took ringled green plant, ringled green. That is, the dihybrid cross, we have taken a round yellow is plant with a round yellow seed crossed with a ringled green. This is what we have done in the dihybrid cross. Now, let us see in this dihybrid cross in the F1 generation, what we got? We got capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y crossed with a small r, small r, small y, small y and in the F1 generation, we got capital R, small r and capital Y, small y. Now, let us see the what is the ratio in the test cross. So, remember what is a test cross? Test cross means it is the crossing of F1 generation, F1 generation with the recessive parent. Now, let us see the F1 generation. The what are the different gametes of F1 generation? This even this we have worked out last class. That is, we have seen that this plant can produce four different types of gametes. That is, capital R, capital Y, capital R, small y, capital R, capital Y, capital R, small y, small r, capital Y and small r, small y. These were the four different gametes which we have discussed earlier and now let us see the test cross. Here we are taking the ringled green plant. What are the gametes of this? Here this can produce only one type of gamete that is the small r, small y. Now when we work out this, We are getting capital R, small r, capital Y, small y, capital R, small r, small y, small y, small r, small r, capital Y, small y, small r, small y, small y, small y. Now, let us see what is the phenotype of this. Phenotype, you can say that this will be round, round yellow, then this one round green then this will be ringled ringled yellow and this one will be ringled green so here we got four different types of plants what are these four different types of plants here we are getting two plants parental type and two plants as the recombinant types. So, here you have to understand that we are getting again the ratio we got 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. So, here we are getting the ratio 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 or we can say that it is equal to 25 percentage, 25 percentage of different plants we got or we can say that 50 percent are of the parental type and 50 percent are of the recombinants. So, hope this is clear to you. This is the, this ratio is known as the dihybrid test cross ratio. So, previously we have done the monohybrid test cross ratio that is 1 is to 1 and in the case of dihybrid test cross ratio, it is 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. Hope this is clear to you. Now, what we are going to do is we will move on to the next problem and we will see. Now, you might have studied about the linked genes. Have you studied about linked genes? Linked genes. What do you mean by linked genes? When you can say that genes are linked, what does it mean? Here it means that two genes are on the same chromosome. When two genes are on the same chromosome, we can say that these genes are linked genes. That is according to the theory of chromosomes, Sutton and Bovary proposed that the theory of chromosomes that is states that genes are located on chromosomes. And if you consider more than one gene and these two genes are on the same chromosome, we can call it as the linked genes. Now, 
Let us see the linked genes, how the genes are located on the chromosomes. <coughs> Here you can see the chromosomes, the structure of chromosome, chromosome has got two chromatids, here you can see the four chromatids are there and this part is known as the centromere and if you uncoil a small part of this chromosome, you can see that here, here comes, it is known as nucleosomes. So, what is a nucleosome? It is made up of a DNA and histones. Histones are the protein molecules. So, we can see that the nucleosomes are made up of histones and DNA and now again if you uncoil it, you will see that the structure of a DNA molecule. This is what we have discussed in the earlier previous class, <coughs> what is the structure of a DNA molecule. So, now come back to the chromosome theory of inheritance. It says that genes are located on chromosomes. Now, let us see here the second problem. Now, we have the second problem that is in human beings blue eye color is recessive to brown eye color. Remember that in human beings blue eye color which is recessive to brown eye color. That means which color is dominant here? brown eye color is dominant. A blue eyed man has married a homozygous brown eyed woman. Homozygous brown eyed. Predict the percentage of having blue eyed children in their family. So, now let us see the problem. Here we have to see a blue eye <coughs> color is recessive to brown. So, which eye color is dominant? Brown eye color. So, we can write brown eye color as capital B, capital B or it can be capital B, small b because we do not know now. This is only mentioned brown eye color is dominant and blue eye color is recessive. So, blue color you can mention that it is sure it is small b, small b. Is it clear? Now, we are going to see whether this is homozygous or heterozygous condition. See the second part in the question it is mentioned, blue eyed man has married a homozygous brown eyed woman, a homozygous brown eyed. So, what you can understand from this, the <coughs> woman is homozygous and the man is blue eyed. So, we have to take blue eyed man, so blue eyed man genotype of, you have to work out like this genotype of blue eyed man okay blue eyed man is small b small b then we can see the genotype of brown eyed woman brown eyed woman that is capital B capital B now it is very easy for you to work out you can see that it is very easy because capital B, capital B crossed with the small b, small b and we are expecting only capital B, small b that is in the generation, in their offspring we are expecting only what color? Brown eyed children. Now, what is the question? Question is predict the percentage of having blue eyed children. Is there any possibility for having blue eyed children for them? No, there is no possibility in their family, there is only possibility to have only the what brown eyed children. So, you have to write the possibility to have blue eyed children is 0 percentage. Is this clear? So, only thing is when we first of all we have to see which trait is dominant and which trait is recessive. If it is dominant, there are two possibilities. One is the possibility is it can be homozygous or it can be heterozygous. In the case of homozygous, both the alleles are of the same type and in the case of heterozygous, alleles are of different type. Now, we are move on to the next problem. This is related to blood group. A man with blood group AB 
and his wife with blood group O. A man with blood group AB and his wife with blood group O claim a child with blood group AB as their son. That means here we have seen the child is having AB blood group. You may think that this blood group, this is father's blood group, the child has got, we may say that. But let us see in genetics, is there any possibility to have AB child or the AB blood group in among their children? Is it clear to you? Yeah? Now let us see the problem. <coughs> Here we can see that a man with blood group AB. So what is the father's blood group? Father's blood group is AB. AB is represented by two alleles. That is we have discussed the co-dominance and we have seen that AB is discussed. We can consider AB IA IB. This is the genotype of AB blood group. Now the female's blood group, mother's blood group. Mother, mother is having O blood group. So O, mother's blood group is O. So we can say the genotype is small i and small i. Now we have seen capital IA, capital IB crossed with a small i, small i and they have got a child. They, they claim that the child with the O blood group, <coughs> so child's blood group, child's blood group is again O, sorry, uh, child with the blood group AB, child with the blood group AB, child with the blood group AB. Now we can see that the possibilities of blood groups in their family. Now let us make the peanut square I A I as one gamete and I B as another gamete crossed with the we are crossing small i. Now what we are getting? We are getting I A small i and I B small i. The phenotype or the blood group here I A small i is a blood group and here I B small i is having B blood group. So in this <coughs> family for this couple what is the only the possibility? The possibility is to have only either the child should have A blood group or the child should have the B blood group. Suppose they say that the child, child with the AB blood group is their son then it is wrong. Even though we may think that the child has got father's blood group, but genetically, theoretically we can prove that if this is wrong, the child does not belong to this family. This family has got only possibility to have either A or B. Is this clear? Now we will move on to the next problem. Next problem. So, so far we have discussed about the test cross and we have discussed about the co-dominance. Now let us see the third phenomenon that is the incomplete dominance. That this problem we can see that a black colored cock, the clock is, cock is having black color when bred with a white colored hen produce steel blue colored offspring called undulation chicken. When the steel blue colored offspring were inbred black, white and steel blue colored progeny were obtained. What will be the expected ratio of the black, steel blue and white progeny? Here when the steel blue colored offsprings were inbred. What do you mean by inbred? Inbred means it is the selfie. Now let us see a black color cock with a white color hen. <coughs> now let us consider black cock. black cock, when you are writing you have to write genotype of black cock, we can say that capital B, capital B, then white colored hen, white colored hen, we can write it as small b, small b. In the F1 generation, we are expecting either black or white as the dominant trait but we got the offsprings of steel blue color. 
that is capital V capital B crossed with the small v small v we got capital B small b and these all were steel blue color steel blue color so what you can understand from this from this you can understand that here the theory of incomplete dominance applies you may think that how can we write black coke as capital B capital B why can't we write it as capital B small b we cannot write capital B small b because here in the F1 generation we got steel blue color which is not any one of the parents are having this trait. So from that you, sh you should think and you should understand that this is related to incomplete dominance. Now let us see the what is the second statement when the steel blue colored offspring were inbred. So here these steel blue were inbred let us see what we are getting capital B small b crossed with the capital B small b. Now in this case we will get capital B capital B capital B small b again capital B small b and we will get small b small b that means we are getting black steel blue and white. So we are getting all these traits in the F2 generation when the steel blue color is inbred. Is this clear? Black cock with white hen, we have got steel blue color and this case we have seen that this is incomplete dominance and so in the F2 generation that is the inbreeding of steel blue, we got all these traits that is black, white as well as we got the steel blue offsprings. This is clear to you. Now we will move on to the next one. Next problem, we will go for a short break now, we will come back after the break. Yes, if